and I took about seven to ten days off. But listen, when you come back from a hiatus like that, full body training two to three times a week. You don't want to fatigue the body. You don't want to kill it. Well, line them up, line them up, knock them down. Yeah. They said it was a grind. They said it takes time. Yeah, I know. I guess they were in line. Every time I try to climb, they cut the rope. I fell straight to the bottom. Got problems. I don't really want to talk about them. No. I've been down this road too many times to be afraid. I close my eyes when I walk down it. What's going on guys? Monday, start of a new week. It is 7.06 in the morning. Been up since 5.30. I already hit a little bit of fasted cardio this morning. Guys see, leanness, maintaining. So standard breakfast as of late. We got some goat yogurt, some whole plain goat yogurt. I got some pumpkin seeds, some blueberries in there. We got two eggs. Two pieces of Canadian bacon. Seymour. This is my standard breakfast as of late. Comes out to 530 calories. This, this, I do not count the Seymour's. And this is going to be a full week of eating and training video, guys. So you're going to see a lot. I'm going to try to break down a lot. And uh, let's get it. Guys, some things just don't change. Mr. Scrap, waiting for every meal. As soon as I'm done, he knows when to come in. He will lick the plates up. Gotta treat my dog good, you already know. All right, guys, it is time for the pre-workout meal. It's 10.30, so a little over three hours since we had breakfast. Pre-workout today, we're having overnight oats, which I prepared last night. We have some strawberries in there. We have some gluten-free, grain-free granola. And I topped it with one half a scoop or one half a serving of that, for that matter, of almond butter and a little bit of honey. Now guys, typically I usually have faster digesting carbs pre-workout, but again, I'm actually not gonna be training today for about two and a half hours. I have two more clients back to back, so I won't be training till around 1.30. So I put some slower digesting carbs with a little more fats in to sustain me for the next couple of hours, and we're gonna get right to the workout. Today's gonna be chest and back, upper body day, let's get it. So this is the workout that I hit Monday afternoon. You guys saw I actually posted this full routine on my channel. It was the most recent video posted. It was the weighted push-pull workout. So just to reiterate what we did here. So we started the routine off with a super set of chest and back. Exercise one was a weighted dip with 110 pounds for six reps. Straight after the dips, we went right to the pull-up bar. Dropped 60 pounds off the belt. So we were working with 50 pounds for the weighted pull-ups and hit another six reps. We did four sets of this superset, so it was four sets of weighted dips, four sets of weighted pull-ups. Right after that routine, we went on to another chest and back superset. As I mentioned in the last couple videos, I recently switched the routine up to a more antagonist superset style training where I'm getting two muscle groups in in one session just to increase the overall burn during the workout since I'm on a cut, guys, and I was nearing the end of the low calories. So the second routine was... 15 straight bar dips with a band for resistance. Supersetted that with 15 second chin over the bar pull up isometric hold. Then that was the second routine of the day. So that makes seven total sets for chest, seven total sets for back done. Then right after that, we went into three more rounds of a superset of push pull again. And here we did band resisted push ups. Again, remember guys, the band is adding resistance. It's making the rep harder at the top where the rep would usually be easier. So 15 reps of the push-ups here. Again, we superseted this with our pull exercise, which was a band assisted, meaning the front left, meaning the band is now helping me with the next exercise, which was a front lever hold. All right, it is 3.30. We are home from the park, home from my training. Trained five clients so far. I got one more at four o'clock today. So we gotta be quick right now. Right after the pro, right after the workout, guys, I had whey isolate and my fast digesting carbs. I had that about an hour ago. Now, post-workout meal. I'm just eating a ribeye, which again, remember, if I'm having a fattier cut of meat, I do not keep the starches in the diet, right? I pretty much eliminate them. I would have greens or some fruit. So post-workout fuel, we have a ribeye, grass-fed bison ribeye from Force of Nature. And we have a half a grapefruit 
Remember, post-workout with the way I had the fast digesting carbs. Those are the carbs I had post-workout. Now we're gonna eat this, train one more client, and then come back for the final meal of the day. So, for dinner, this is the meal right after I trained my last client of the day. We got grilled shrimp, 150 grams cooked weight of white rice, and about seven asparagus spears, some thick cut organic ones, you already know. This is not the last meal of the day. We still got dessert left, guys. All right, guys, the second day of the week, you guys saw yesterday's workout. We did pre Yesterday's workout was upper body, chest and back focus. You guys saw a full day eating. The only thing I didn't show you was my dessert at night. So it's day two. Breakfast this morning was the same that you saw earlier. So now listen, it's a pre-workout meal. Yesterday's pre-workout meal, as I explained, was slower digesting carbs, had more fats in it. That's because I wasn't training before. That's because between my pre-workout meal and my training, I had a three-hour gap. I had to train two clients, and I ate about 45 minutes before my first client, right? So I ate 10.30. I actually didn't get to train yesterday until 1.30. So three hours between the meal and the pre and the workout, so I had to predominantly use more slow digesting carbs and higher fats. Now, today's workout, I'm gonna be done around 12 o'clock. It's 10.30 right now, so this is typically the pre-workout that I was talking about, right? Faster digesting carbs, very low in fat. I have three rice cakes. I top them with coconut yogurt, one scoop of collagen protein, honey. We have three dates on the side. And you guys can see, that's the rice cakes, the dates, the leftover yogurt. That's 170 grams total yogurt. Now, this is going to be very fast digesting carbs. I'm going to be training around 12 o'clock. It's going to be a leg day. I'll be in the gym today. It's predominantly going to be a machine-focused leg workout. If you guys saw last week, we were in the park supersetting chest and legs where I was working on strength with those single-leg pistol squats, right? So now we're going to be more hypertrophy-focused. More machine based, easier on the nervous system, especially since yesterday's workout was very taxing. So I'm gonna eat this up now, train, see you guys later. And it is Wednesday morning, guys. It's about 8.45. Last clip you guys saw was that pre-workout meal yesterday when I was about to go hit legs in the gym. And bro, for some reason, as soon as I put that meal down, I just started getting really hot. My body was starting feeling under the weather. So I went to the gym with the intention of possibly training, but by the time I walked in, I said, nah. And uh, I just sat in the sauna for about a half hour trying to sweat it out. Came back home, fever jumped up to about 102 degrees, and it is now Wednesday morning. That was Tuesday. I've been bedridden since. Not getting tested for nothing. I got a nice cool rag on. I sweated through about four or five pairs of clothes last night. Today, so far, all I ate was a little bit of coconut yogurt, some pineapples, blueberries, and a grapefruit, and some tea. I tried to eat yesterday. I had uh, some force of nature, the ancestral blend bison meat, thinking, oh, let me get some organs in my body. Maybe, you know, I'll get the vitality up. I was able to keep it down. Didn't make me feel too uh, energetic, to be honest, though, so... But like I said, I probably, right now, I'm probably lost about four or five pounds already in the last two days. Just under eating yesterday, not going to eat enough today. But again, guys, you got to let your body recover, right? If you start eating too much food when you're under the weather, your body's going to say, all right, should I use this energy to digest and assimilate the food, or should I use this energy to recover the body, right? So... You're not always going to be able to eat at maintenance or if you're in a surplus when you're sick. Trust me, guys, it's normal. Let your body recover. Let it do as minimal work as possible. And when you're feeling better, eat a little more to make up for the deficit that you were in the last couple of days. And like I've said in the past, guys, when I get back to training after some time off, so the last time I was sick was actually over a year ago, a year and a half to be exact. Last January of 21, when I caught COVID, when I was down in Mexico, I took about 7 to 10 days off. But listen, when you come back from a hiatus like that, full body training, two to three times a week. You don't want to fatigue the body. You don't want to kill it. You want to let it get some stimulation. Two exercises per muscle group for the first week each workout. Like I said, two to three full body workouts max. And then after that week of recovery, you should be back stronger like you were before, right? And remember, 
a break is good sometimes, guys. Not a sick break, but, you know, your body needs to recover, needs to relax. Not saying I was overtrained. I trained only Monday this week. I took the entire weekend off, so I had two days off. You guys saw the workout I did Monday, that chest and back. It was definitely brutal. It was definitely intense. But, again, it was only 10 sets for chest, 10 sets for back. But, again, guys, I was over at the weekend. Over the weekend, I was at a party. Maybe somebody was sick over there. And I uh, probably wasn't eating as optimal as I could have. And, uh, you know, a plethora of things. One leads to another. Here we are, editing videos, bed written in the couch right now. So, hopefully we get back to training soon, and you're still going to see this whole week of eating and training, whether I get any more training in or not. I'll try to keep you updated on the meals I eat today. You guys can see right there, I got my lemon water, some fresh squeezed orange juice. My girl's going to go bring me some pineapple, ginger, turmeric juice. Like I said, guys, I like to keep it pretty simple when I'm sick, you know. I try to get the protein in. If I have to, I'll use shakes because, you know, not many people have appetite when they're feeling under the weather. Like I said, I had 102 fever, so it was decently high. So, let's get back to editing. See you soon. So, the fever broke a little bit. Went down to 99. Took some Tylenol earlier this morning. I'm really not a big fan of taking, like, ibuprofen or things like that. But when I'm sick and my fever's high, they do work just for the fact that I guess I don't take them too often. My body responds pretty well to it. So I took it around 7 a.m. this morning. It's 11. Like I said, the fever dropped a little bit. I haven't eaten anything else yet. I just have my pineapple, ginger, turmeric juice. I told you, light and easy foods today. A lot of liquids. Got to stay hydrated. I have some bone broth that Jackie went and picked up for me. Just some simple and kettle and fire today nothing homemade today just really simple i'm not trying to do any work i definitely don't want to turn the oven on and cook it's fucking hot out here today in new york it's like 85 so i'm just gonna relax a little bit chilling you guys can see definitely looking pretty lean this morning but again i definitely probably am down a good four pounds since monday what's the matter bud we got scrappy hot over here he just ate his lunch. Go lay down, bud. You're on camera. So, I'm going to finish this juice up. I'll probably have my kettle and fire broth and the rest of my coconut yogurt with fruit that I didn't finish this morning. Because, again, the appetite isn't 100% there. But I'm feeling better as the day goes on. Uh, I will 100% take off tomorrow from training regardless of how I feel. Let's see how I feel Friday. And uh, remember guys, your body's got to go through this. You got to fight it. You got to recover. You don't want to go back to the workout or stress the body if you're not 100% because that's just going to lead you to falling back, probably making yourself sick again. So just recover, rest. Your body always needs rest. And uh, hopefully Friday we can get a little full body workout in. And that would be the second workout of the week. That means we would have trained only Monday and Friday. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys updated. This was a full week video of training and eating. They didn't anticipate to get sick, but I might as well keep it real with you guys. See you soon. All right, so still Wednesday, still under the weather, getting better. Fever's going down. It's around 99 right now. But I actually just got delivered, which I haven't really spoke to you guys much about. I've been messing with a meal prep service the last about month, right? It's extremely hot here in New York during the summer, muggy, 85, 90 degree days almost every day. And again, it's very muggy and humid in New York, right? So after I train, I've said this many times in the past, I always like to eat a fresh cooked meal, right? I prefer to cook my meals as soon as I'm done training. I don't like to meal prep earlier in the, in the week and have a whole bunch of food sitting around in the fridge. Why? Because it gets dried out, et cetera, et cetera. But came across this company, Mega Fit Meals, that I actually seen... Chris Bumstead, for any of you who don't know, he's like three-time reigning Mr. Olympia. He's been using these meals, so I decided to give him a shot about a month ago, and man, these meals are banging. I have no affiliation with this company, not yet. Maybe they'll hook me up with a sponsorship or start sending me meals. But I've been ordering, the first time I ordered the 12-pack, and I figured it would last me 12 days, but every meal was so good, I ate two a day instead of one a day. Lasted me six days. So this time over the 16 pack, 
And I'm trying to keep it one meal a day again, trying to let these stretch out a little bit. Relatively cheap, $199 for 16 meals. So like $10, maybe a little over $10 a meal. Excellent macros on these foods though. So just for instance, I got one of their signature meals right here, which is chicken, jasmine rice, yellow onion, green bell peppers, gluten-free sauce. We got honey mustard chicken, a couple honey mustard chickens. They were really good. We got some beast burgers, a blend of beef, elk, boar, and bison. Another honey mustard chicken. A lot of chicken meals here, guys. Just because, again, post-workout in the summertime, I prefer to eat a leaner and a lighter meal as opposed to a heavier, fatty cut of meat. I'll typically save the fattier cuts of red meat for dinner time now. A little cooler in the evening. Got the AC blasting. I'm not so rushed, right? So we got a chimichurri steak. A cheeseburger bowl. Another one of their signature meals. Bison burgers. Got a fly flying around in here. Buffalo chicken quesadilla. Give myself a little treat. We got some Angus steak and wild rice. Another chimichurri steak. Oh, and this, guys. They make these protein donuts, right? Chocolate glazed donuts. They are absolutely slamming. They do have a little bit of artificial sweeteners in here that erythriol and monk fruit extract but for a treat once in a while on a hard day's work you deserve it it's not gonna kill you so I got two packs of the donuts they ordered one last time and they were just too good and what's this a fiesta turkey this is the one thing I didn't try last time I'm trying this time so we got 16 meals here now you guys know I also work with a company by optimizers I've talked about them many times in the video I take their masszymes. Really good for helping break down. If you um, take in, if you typically eat a higher protein diet, right? Which again, if you're training and your goal is muscle building, you guys should be aiming for about one gram per pound of body weight. That's just gonna keep your macros in check, and it's gonna ensure that you're getting enough protein throughout the day to ensure muscle recovery, muscle building, etc., etc. So. Highly recommend you guys checking out Bioptimizer and getting your hands on some Mazzymes. You guys are going to notice now, if you're having a big protein meal, it's going to digest a lot easier. You're going to have less gas. And again, guys, this company, really good, bro. They send me stuff all the time. So they just sent me two Biome Breakthroughs. These are gut health supplements. I got a vanilla one and the chocolate powder one. Didn't order them. They hooked it up. If you guys want a code for Bioptimizers, you guys get 15% off anything on their website if you use my code I believe it's bar naturals yes just bar naturals all caps you get 15% off and this is a like I said this is for the gut health right so let me read exactly what it says biome breakthrough is a vegetarian friendly gluten free and dairy free, free blend of IG1 max I really don't know what IG1 max I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that and gut friendly bacteria designed to improve digestive function digestive function and promote overall GI health. IGY Max has been shown in studies to improve gastrointestinal integrity by increasing beneficial flora, reducing inflammation in the gut, and reducing permeability of the gut wall. So if you guys deal with leaky gut syndrome, that means that your gut walls are being permeated by intakes of particles and they're leaking out into the bloodstream, right? You don't want that. So IGY Max has been shown to work along the entire length of the uh, the GI tract, right? So they sent me a vanilla flavor and a chocolate flavor, and this says you take this on an empty stomach and eight ounces of water once a day. So I'll start with that. I'm not going to do anything today that's going to upset my stomach. I haven't been eating a lot of food today. Maybe tonight I'll have one of these meals. Who knows? Another company that sends me a lot of stuff. You guys should try check them out. BioTrust. Let's see what I got. I believe they sent me a protein powder this time. A sample. So, we got BioTrust, 24 grams of clean protein, milk chocolate flavored, and let's see the ingredients on this, guys. We got, there's a blend of casein, 
whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate. It's got some inulin, which is fiber. It's got sunflower creamer, sunflower lechitin, no soy lechitin, we don't fuck with that. It's flavored with sea salt, stevia leaf. It's got a little guar gum and it's got some erythriol, which I'm not a big fan of, but again, I got sent this, I didn't order it. I will try it out, see how it handles on me. And the macros on this are two and a half grams of fat, eight grams of carbs, which you typically wouldn't get in a complete isolate. This is going to come from the concentrate and the blend of casein, so it's going to have a little more fiber and plus that inulin that's in here. 24 grams of protein. Give it a shot. Like I said, guys, still not feeling 100%, but Jackie went to the store for me, got me some kettle and fire bone broth. This is going to be my lunch today which I will finish with, I told you guys for breakfast, I had some coconut yogurt oops, and some pineapple and blueberry in there. I'll finish that off with my bone broth. So, still recovering guys, trying to get my body back to 100%. Taking all the right measures. I will have some sea moss with lunch. I didn't have any yet today. Again, it was a very off morning. So. Still continuing with this full week of training and eating, even though it's not 100% perfect this week. You guys see we're under the weather, but keeping it real with you guys. Let's catch you at the next clip. All right, guys. New day. It is Thursday, and I'm sure you guys could see. Probably look like crap right now. So it's the third day. I've been feeling under the weather. Since Tuesday, I've been feeling pretty shitty, right? Like I mentioned earlier, I tried working out Tuesday, went to the gym, ended up just going in the sauna because when I got there, started feeling under the weather. Barely ate anything for the remainder of the day on Tuesday. Yesterday, if you guys saw in the clips, all I really had was a little bit of yogurt, fruit, and this morning I woke up, I was down about almost 7 pounds, almost 153 pounds right now. Really ate nothing all day, had a smoothie earlier, it stayed with me fine. Now I'm starting to build a little appetite up. Now you guys are probably wondering, maybe you think I have COVID, and honestly, I really have no idea. I don't find the reason to get tested. What is the test going to tell me? If I test positive, what's that telling me? Stay home until I feel better, right? What am I going to do regardless? Stay home until I feel better. So in my opinion, finding that out is irrelevant. just going to add stress to your life. So hopefully day by day, I start feeling a little better, get a little more appetite up. So what we eat now, I just got a couple scrambled eggs with cheese. Some more fruit and uh, some lemon water, guys. So, third day, not feeling 100%. Means tomorrow's gonna be Friday. I'm 100% gonna end up taking off, even if I wake up feeling good. So, I'll be back to training hopefully by Monday. And starting Monday, I'm dropping down to a three day a week workout only. Training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm gonna dramatically lower the volume. Due to the fact that I've been on a cut now for just about three months. I'm at the lower end of it. My body's going to be burnt out. That mixed with all the training I do with my clients. Plus me trying to train another four or five times a week. Just wasn't optimal for my body. Obviously it took a toll on it in my opinion. So I'm going to scale the volume very, very far back. Just again to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I jump to an upper day on Monday. Lower day on Wednesday. Upper again on Friday. Really trying to keep the volume of each exercise or each workout, for that matter, pretty low. Focusing on what I was almost doing in the winter time. One set, I'll try to PR on one set and then walk away. So, for instance, on an upper body day, let's just say weighted pulls. I'll probably do what's called like almost like an extreme drop set, right? I'll go for my heaviest weight set one, almost like a reverse pyramid style. I'll try to hit a PR on the first set with a weight and a rep range. And then I'll do two or three consecutive drops for one total set just to do a high volume set, fry the muscle in one shot, and then move on to chest for that matter, right? So on my first upper day, it's probably going to be back in chest, then lower, then it's probably going to be shoulder focused on the th upper body day on Friday with minor chest and back, right? So I'm going to eat this meal now, hopefully it gives me some energy, and uh, I can start feeling a little bit better, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's not a typical full week of training and eating. It's more like a full week of me recovering and barely eating. 
But I uh, hope you guys watched the last video, the last workout, which was the weighted push and pull. That was the last workout I did this past Monday. It was a lot of volume, a lot of work, so that definitely could have taken a toll on me also. Again, being low calories, I'm ending right now at around 2,600 for the end of the day. When I'm at high end in the beginning of the cup before I actually went into cut, it was around 34, 3,500 calories. So almost 1,000 calories swing now, so obviously I'm going to be low energy. So I really got to scale back the volume, be a little smarter like that. I'm going to eat this. See you guys soon. Good morning, good morning. It is Friday, June 10th. End of the week would have been the end of my training week. But as you guys know, last couple of days I've been feeling under the weather. This is day four now. This is actually the first day I was able to wake up and make myself some breakfast. I had an appetite. Not saying I feel back to 100%, but I feel like I'm getting there now. Not going to be doing any training at least until Monday. So I have another today, tomorrow, and Sunday off minimum just to fully let the body recover. So for breakfast this morning, and so just so you guys know, this is definitely going to be the smallest, leanest, probably least muscular version of bar natural breads that you're ever going to see, guys. I'm, I didn't even weigh myself this morning. I don't want to see the number, but yesterday I was 153 pounds. Barely ate yesterday, so I can only imagine I'm probably weighing in this morning 152, 151. Not ideal numbers. Definitely lost some body fat, which is a good thing, but... I'm 99% sure I probably lost a little bit of muscle too, just due to the fact that I was very inactive, didn't stimulate it at all. So for breakfast today, I'm trying to keep it a nice balance, protein, carbs, and fats, right? So we got three scrambled eggs with one piece of mozzarella cheese melted in. We got some Canadian bacon. And on the side, I have a half a cup of blueberries, that's all I had left, and three dates. That's going to be my carbs for the morning. So we got protein and fats from the eggs and the meat, carbs from the fruit. Hopefully this is day one of getting better now. So hopefully by Monday I'm feeling back to 100%. And also guys, I'm boiling some tea. Been drinking a ton of uh, burdock root tea. Check it out, really good for the immune system. So uh, I'm going to eat this meal. Let's see if I can put down a good at least three, four meals today. Try to build my energy back up. And uh, hope you guys are enjoying this series. It wasn't what it was planned, but like I keep saying, I'm trying to keep it real, show you guys what's really going down right now. So I'm going to eat this. See you guys soon. All right, guys. Friday afternoon. So you saw I ate breakfast this morning. I was actually able to get up this morning, had some energy, ate that meal. And to be honest, I ate two more times today. So I am actually definitely feel like I'm on the road to getting back to 100%. For lunch, I had a grilled cheese with some more Canadian bacon, some fresh squeezed orange juice. I'm honestly not really caring about the foods I eat right now. I'm just trying to get something that's sustainable and that has a decent amount of calories because I've been so low calorie for the last four days, right? I told you I'm down at least seven pounds right now. Not ideal. Definitely lost some muscle, but nothing you can do about it when you're sick, right? You can't force your body to eat. Especially if you don't have an appetite, right? You're just going to make yourself feel worse. So I had a grilled cheese with Canadian bacon, some fresh squeezed orange juice. Then, just about 10 minutes ago, I had one of those mega fit meals. I had what's called the cheeseburger bowl. Just because it's pretty high in fats, carbs, and protein. Again, I'm trying to get as many macros and micros in as possible today. Trying to re-get my energy back. Trying to nourish the system. And, uh, like I said, I'm... 99% sure I ain't going to do any training until Monday. If I do anything over the weekend, it would probably be some light stretching, maybe some band work just to get some blood flow to some areas. But one thing I do notice that's been bothering me since I've been sick more again is my right elbow, something that hasn't bothered me a lot at all lately. It's actually been really well. So I don't know if it's due to the inactivity, me sleeping a lot on my side, or like I said, I don't even know if I have COVID or not. And I know when I had it back in 2021, I know COVID does tend to affect the joints and everything, so maybe I have COVID in my right elbow. As some people would say, COVID's in the air to the right of you, right? But who really knows where it is, right? But definitely got some, just some joint discomfort in the right elbow still, so I'm not going to push it, not going to exert myself. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, when I do get back to training next week, it's going to be full body routine, three days next week max not trying to fatigue the body, and I'm going to stick to a three-day-a-week program for a while now, and I'm slowly going to start bumping my calories back up. So 
the end of my cut where I'm at right now, it's been 2,600 calories. Well, not now, meaning the days I've been sick. But up until Monday, I've been on a 2,600 calorie day diet, eating about 50% carbs, maybe 25% protein, 25% fats. So the carbs have been very high, and I'm going to keep it that way. But now I'm going to slowly go into a reverse diet, try to build back up some strength, and get myself out of this deficit, re-get myself back to my main strength and max strength. This way I could get back to training hard. Even though it's going to be a three-day week split, I really want to try to put on some mass now. So one thing that's counterproductive, if the goal is to put size on, is to do too much, right? Because remember, the more you do, the more you're going to be burning. That means I'd have to eat even more. So to avoid gaining a lot of body fat initially, I guess that I'm probably going to jump up to like 28, 2,900 calories to start. Three-day week program is going to be predominantly higher carbs. Enough fats and protein still. I'll probably keep the protein around 170 grams per day, which is just about a little over a gram per pound of body weight. And the reason why I'm keeping the carbs high is just for the performance aspect, guys. I feel so much better when I have a lot of carbs in my system when I'm going into an intense workout, right? I've done it on high fats before. Not saying I couldn't do it, but I did notice that when I was on higher fats, I did get that lactic acid build up faster, right? I would fatigue the muscles faster. I wouldn't be able to push out as much reps under time, under tension, right? Meaning, let's just say I'm doing a five-minute push-up hold and max reps. When I get into those reps with high carbs, I'm pretty good, right? I could bust them out. But now, let's just say if I'm high fat, I kind of feel like that lactic acid would build up a lot faster and it would deplete the set quicker. So I'm going to keep the carbs high in the diet and with a goal now, try to put some mass on so I'm going to keep the volume low, energy throughout the day. Like I said, I'm not going to try to burn, burn, burn all the time now. It's counterproductive if your goal is to build muscle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Again, this was more like a full week of being sick, minimal training, and minimal eating. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope it gave you a little insight of how you guys should manage yourself if you're feeling under the weather and how you could go about getting back to your training. So if you have any questions, guys, leave them in the comments section. I always get back to you. Like the video, it helps the algorithm out. Share it with your friends, your family. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button. And if you did subscribe, again, share it with your friends and your family. Make them subscribe. I appreciate all the support, guys. We got a lot more to come this year. New goals to hit. From the smallest version of Bar Natural Prez. Peace out, Bar Naturals. And they all love to talk, you know they do that shit the most. Think you on my level, boy, but you ain't even close. Yeah.